Are you a boss or a leader? Let's find out in today's video. All right, so it's gonna be a long video. So if you are not gonna watch till the end, let me give a brief summary here what to expect from watching this video. So I always relate project management or leadership style as a movie or movie director and the actors. Tell me one thing, if you watch a movie and if you have a excellent director and a worst actor, then would that movie succeed? In my opinion, I would think that it will not because no matter how good you can direct, but if the actors doesn't know how to act, then it's gonna impact the movie, right? So it's the same thing here. So if I go with that analogy of movie direction and actors, then the micromanagement to me looks like a director coming and telling the actor, in this case, your staff, exactly how to act then that way director is actually doing both the direction as well as acting. So what's the point in getting an actor, right? So if you think about the other scenario where if the director has casted excellent actors and when the director says or whatever he has in his mind about the movie or the scene and give it to the actor and because of the experience the actor has, he would improvise that in his own way. And then that movie is gonna be a super hit, right? So that's the overall idea. And the second scenario is where the director is now more of a leader and the actor is just staff because director believes in the actor. And in this case, the leader believes in the staff that they would do or improvise things if he just tells them what his vision is. Does that make sense? So the whole video is about that, but if it is too long, then skip to the end and come back next week. All right, so let's get started. So today, Now it's better. All right, so now let's get into today's topic, which is the difference between a manager and a leader. So I have few options. I have my notes here, and I'm gonna go through and give you my explanation why. If you are a manager and not a leader, what are some changes that you can make to ensure that you're treating your staff or your members of the team, depending on what they need from you. If you have team members in the team who want to become a leader, then you don't want to micromanage them or tell them how to do certain things you just have to tell what you're expecting and let them figure out how they're gonna do it if you are a boss and not a leader then you're just treating your staff like an admin you're just handing over tasks that you could ideally do or even somebody who is not in the professional world even they can do it because you are telling them exactly how to do it. The problem with that approach is then you are wasting your time because you hired somebody on your team so that they have the expertise and they can do the job for you and you don't have to teach them or tell them step by step how to do it. But certain managers or certain individuals prefer that way. And if your team members are at a leadership level, they wouldn't like that approach because they don't want you to tell them how to do certain things. You just tell them what you're trying to get out of them and let them do it. And as a leader, that's where you would empower them to do it in whichever way you want. And if it's not a value add, don't push them to do because then those tasks has to be given to somebody who is task oriented. So there are certain people, they don't want to think about it. They just have to be told on how to do step by step. And then it's better to give such tasks. You know, if you are a type of manager where or your personality is that you don't know how to embrace the empowering part of it and just wanted to tell exactly do this 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 set up this meeting do this go and meet that person you know yada 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 then it's better to hand this task over to somebody who is junior and who would like to run based on the list of task items and not it 
another leader from your team. All right, number two, another distinction between a boss and a leader is that, you know, if you're just a boss, you're not thinking about the value you and your team is delivering. You're more worried about maintaining your status symbol and just providing some non-value update as if, you know, yep, I'm still part of the team, I'm here, and kind of establishing yourself and not really thinking about, you know, what real value am I providing? If, if you're just doing tasks for the sake of doing it and not really contributing it then you know it doesn't make sense because people are gonna see it through pretty easily for example if you are being invited to a team or a discussion and you are invited just so that you are listening in and you are participating but someone else is driving and nobody is expecting you to drive because it's someone else's project or someone else's responsibility but as an extended stakeholder they might have invited you but as a manager or that boss mentality you would think that okay I'm here and I have to do something so let's just do some random stuff right but that's not the expectation you're just there so you are listening into and when time comes they'll tell you what to do and you don't have to just go and just do some random stuff just for the sake of doing it and if you're a leader then you would ask instead of doing random stuff you would ask the right question what is that you want what is the expectation from me and my team and the people who invited you they should tell you that these are the 10 things that you need from you on your team and that way you're not wasting your time figuring out what exactly I have to do. Rather, you're just focused on, okay, I need to deliver these and that's the expectation from this team. So I'm gonna drive my team and get it done for them. So that's the way of looking at it. Just because you are in part of some discussion doesn't mean that you have to show value by just doing random stuff. You know, people are gonna see through it and they're gonna eventually not respect you because you you just are creating just additional work for everybody okay number three being a boss or a manager or that type of leadership you're just forcing your team to just do some tasks and without encouraging them to think about creative solutions or some logical reasoning you're just telling them do this and that's all you don't know why you're doing it and if they ask question you don't have the answer either so the problem with that is then you're not empowering the team to think about why they are doing certain things so you can get the full benefit out of it so let me give you an example here so let's say you have to tell your staff to go to a destination B and be there at 11 or 12 in the noon and that's it right once you reach there then you'll decide the next step so if you are a manager or if you are a boss kind of personality not a leader personality then you would say hey you know you, you would call up the staff and tell them hey why don't you just take a train from the destination A and go to destination B you have to park your car at certain location get the get the train ticket from the kiosk and do this get into the quiet car in the train and then you would reach at 12 noon at the destination B and then I'll meet you there so you have to lay out each step right so if you're a leader or if you are not a boss or a manager or a micromanager then you would rather instead of explaining those tasks you would say hey I need you to be at destination B at 12 in the noon can you make it that's it right and have the staff figure out how you're gonna reach there because so if you are a manager type of personality then you're just without thinking telling the steps that the staff has to follow what if the staff is already at location b and he or she is staying there so whatever step you illustrated to them is of no use because they are already there whereas as a leader if you tell them hey i would see your destination b and then let's plan out then if staff is already at destination b then it's much easier rather than the staff going back to destination a getting a train and reaching destination b just because the manager told so right so those are kind of high level generic example where you want to think about if you are a boss or a manager think about if you're doing certain things and just evaluate yourself if you are a task oriented person and if you manage and control your staff by giving exact tasks then are you really getting the value out of your staff right you do, do you need 
such high quality high professional stuff you can just hire anybody because anyway you are dictating the task for them so anybody can do it as long as you give 10 steps for someone to follow and perform it but as a leader he or she is up bringing the team and making the team think about the solution the potential options and all that so the team is learning as well as the leader is gonna learn together and if the staff doesn't know how to do it they'll go back and ask the leader and then leader can explain that for the first time but in the future then similar task comes the staff is already equipped to do that because the leader has trained them well and given them the option to drive certain things in certain way all right so that's my rant for today and you know it, i don't know if it made any sense or not but i Part of sharing that because I saw something on Instagram or something, a picture about boss versus leader. Let me see if I can find it. All right, I think I found it. This is the one, as you can see here, that shows boss versus leader. And here they have certain things. The boss always says I and takes credit of whatever the team does. Micromanages exactly what I said in this example criticizes for not doing certain tasks let's say in this example where the boss asked you to go to destination a take the train and reach at destination b without asking you know where the staff is in the first place if the if they are already in destination b then all the other steps are irrelevant right and then yeah exactly the point here says direct you know that's what exactly a boss or a manager would do because they only would like to direct and tell them exactly the steps because that's what they know but that doesn't mean that that's the right thing to do because they might be better more efficient way to do stuff that unless you tell the staff what to do they wouldn't talk to you and tell you that there could be efficient ways to do stuff speaks more yeah definitely commands and inspire fear these are all the traits of a boss or somebody who is just manager and not a true leader so now let's take a look at the leader always says we we as a team and then gives credit to the team as a leader he or she never says that he did it he would say my team did it he always delegates and encourages that's exactly what we spoke here and then takes responsibility even if the staff does something incorrectly he takes responsibility because he assigned that to the staff and maybe he did not train them well on how to do it for the first time and he coaches and listens more and he inspires enthusiasm and asks questions what the staff has for him or her so those are the differences between again the boss and the leader and you can see that here all right guys so that's the end of the long video hope at least you watched some part of it not sure it's really long so if you did not that's fine if you have made it this far then give it a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already all right stay tuned for more project management videos and i'll see you in the next one take care bye